Hello, welcome to Two Guys Funky. With the, uh, fun Wait, listen, I'm doing sorry, the intro. Sorry about What's that. What's the matter with sorry, you? Sorry, I got carried away. We got guests here. I know, I know, I know. I don't know what get happened. your act together. The That's, girls are coming over. I'll work on it. I'll work on it. We're Two Guys with Guitars. I'm Eugene Edwards over here. That's Dr. Dylan Calajuri over hello, there. Hello, hello, hello. Can you believe it? It's really him. Yes. And uh, we came in hot. And uh, we're here with mm. a live studio audience. Go ahead, America. Well, it, it's just Daniel. It's just... And Rex. Party of one. Oh, and Rex is here. But he can't he can't clap because he just got back from getting a uh, a a a a a podicure a podicure <laughs> a podicure c pop p a w not p o t uh so um uh thank you for all we have some new uh, Patreon members that signed up over this past week we really appreciate the support uh you can always follow we have a link down below if, if you want to support us on Patreon uh if you have the upper tier stuff you get a little extra thing that we usually film. After we so far, are, it's been all upper are. tiers, and we are very Actually, thankful. Yes, the majority of the are, of your upper echelon, yeah. Patreon people. Yeah, uh, we Eugene's going to get off Wick cheese pretty soon, mm -hmm. and he'll be able to eat solid foods. If yeah, you guys keep yeah. This up, I'll so. buy my cheese and my whip separately. Yes, <laughs> that's what you get. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so guess what? We are going to be talking about how to build speed in your playing. Now, mm. um, it's important. I'm, it, it well yeah. let's talk about we'll, we'll talk about why it can be important sure um this is something that i think a lot of players would i think we would all like to play fast yeah basically. i think it's right. a, it's like a measuring contest if you will of, of sorts. course but yeah. now it's also relative though and we're talking about that a little bit because we always what that means is we all like to play faster than we play now sure and guilty yeah, I hear, I hear certain runs or I'll hear another player do something like, oh, my God, that was blindingly flat fast. And I don't know if I'll ever be able to do that. But then on the other hand, I'll hear my I'll hear playback of myself. I'm thinking, wow, that sounds really fast. Yeah. So even we, we may miss miss gauge our own playing speed. I think so. And I think fast. Let's let's make fast and reflexive a synonym for the purpose of this, because what that means is it has to be so ingrained and internalized that you've made it a reflexive thing because it's not you're not thinking that fast that's right you know that's, what I mean? that's what i mean yes yeah. I, I sometimes when a, when a student asks me about uh well i might i might demonstrate something mm -hmm. uh, at at record tempo let's say or at a certain tempo right and they'll say well well, well that was really fast sure to me it's not yeah because it's it's a passage that i already know right Duh. So and um and and so sometimes when when I, I think about when we talk about playing guitar fast, yeah. Sometimes I think it, like what we really mean is fluidly, right? Usually it's something that we know really really well, yeah. And once we know it really really well, that and what I'm always saying that slow becomes smooth, then smooth becomes fast. Uh, so everything that we play quickly, uh, it seems like we probably learned it slow first. I think uh yeah, and I it's. Once you can play something evenly slow, and I, I see a lot of comments about metronomes whenever we talk about mm -hmm. speed, and those are those are well founded, well, well considered comments. Um, yeah, because if you can play something evenly slow, that means that you're going to be able to speed it up post haste. It's going to be very mm -hmm. soon when you can speed it up. So it's less about like this idea that like oh I'm going to have to notch it one click up for a million times. It's actually like if you can play this slow. It's not going to be that long until you can play it fast, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. It's just about, can you make that even connectedness where each note has the same amount of volume and and put a pulse in your playing? And that's what's going to going to make it easy for you to play faster. No, that's not. And But there are techniques and some gear things we'll talk about that does help build speed. So let's get straight to, um, there's five steps, by the way. Five. There's, it's kind of a five-step thing today. Yeah, uh, five fingers. And of course, always go back, rewatch this. You know, it'll all, it'll be here for for history. It's per our legacy, Dylan. Yeah. So the first step is um, uh, is uh, actually what is the first step? Sure. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. No. So so it's basically. I mean, I actually put it up there for you too, Eugene. Just I got in you. case. I put it in Wingdings font. I don't know if that's oh, going to be look. a problem or not. No, I can't ring Wingding. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sorry. Thank you for putting it there. Um, no problem. So I think uh, the the first step here though is to really consider oh, the chromatic form. Thank you. Ho! Oh, <laughs> there's a gas leak here. And so <laughs> now I, he tells me if you guys can start one at home right now, by the end of the show, you might be in the same headspace as us. I don't know. Uh, it's a live studio audience. You guys, it's live. It's a live I show. I wish you'd have told me about the gas leak before yeah. I took a couple of licks of those wacky tabs. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, so basically the concept here is to play fast. It's really both hands that have to become agile, right? 
And so there's an element of you needing to work on this hand, or, which we could sort of economically and very inclusively call the fretting hand. I like to call it, yeah. Yeah. And this hand, which we could very sort of diversely call the- Since it strums. Strumming hand. There you go. Right. Some people call it for the left hand and right hand, but that's but the, controversial. Yes, well, well that leaves Careful. out the southpaws. We yeah. got southpaws out there. <laughs> Easy. And yeah. so and so basically, so you would you would work on your fretting hand and your strumming hand, and not in totally in isolation, but with sort of your focus, the majority of it looking to one side or the other, because it's going to have to be that Depending way. on the passage. Yeah. Yeah, we'll go over some of those things. Yeah. yeah you're right. So uh, the, one of the ones that's the most basic concept for just about everybody to pick up right out of the way is called the chromatic form. Um, and, and the reason it's called a chromatic form, not chromatic scale, because it's not quite the chromatic scale. Mm -hmm. it's, it, uh, it's just a shape that's repeated down the neck. Sort okay, of, so yeah. Dylan's going to demonstrate for us the chromatic form, and then he's going to tell us a little more about it. And I'll do it pretty slowly. You guys ready for this? I am. All right, here we go. <laughs> uh, so and then, yeah, it does. It feels like something's going to happen. Uh, but basically, it's five, six, seven, eight on every string, and I'm alternate picking it. We'll start to talk about the variations, and I have a special little thing for the the Patreon folks about uh, how to get a ton out of this. But the, so the the concept here is down, up, down, up with the pick, mm -hmm. and one, two, three, four with the fingers on the left hand or okay. or fretting hand. And now, if you're newer, you're really not going to be able to do that yet. So you're going to want to start with just trying to get the one, two, three, four down on one string. Again, concentrating on that yeah. fret hand first. Yeah. And if you even if you're not newer, right? Every time you click up the speed or the tempo or or the intensity of this, it's gonna get harder again and you are again gonna have to focus on one of the hands. Mm -hmm. So um just focusing on this hand and being able to go and with the pulse. Skip to the next string. Yes. That's a thing, you guys. And and being able to develop like a, a pulse in your playing. And by that I mean uh, accenting a downbeat for every four of the notes. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And what happens when you accent is that uh, the tendency is to have like a rebound effect where everything else is a little bit uh, sped up or slowed down as a result. Yes. And it's like, well, wait a minute. We don't want that. We want it to be super even. So you, what you can end up when you when you're first learning an accent is you end up with this, where it's like it's rushed that accent is sure. rushed because you're developing the neural pathways to even be able. Well, to Well, so because your brain is is really paying attention. I need to change strings now. Ab absolutely. <laughs> so yeah. that's that. that going to be louder. That's that, that reflexive what, part. It's the one you're thinking about the most. Yeah, it has to become reflexive. Okay. In order for you to be able to do this, so um, so you might just start on one note and being able to do that if that's where you're at with it. If you're able to do this to now, develop the strum hand, to develop the strum hand. Can we talk about pick hold? Actually, I want to talk pick hold in, in uh, uh, yes, pick hold now and then another pick, uh, factor later. So, pick, yes. so there'll be multiple pick, pick factors. This is the mm -hmm. first of two pick factors. Yep. So uh, for those that are counting. So show them your pick hold. What do you do? Uh, this is between thumb and forefinger, y'all. Thumb wow. and forefinger. I'm using a teardrop, gin, dunlop, nylon, gauge, whatever. Okay. Medium. And I, I, the way I describe this to students is I would make an okay sign with your picking hand. So make like a, Hey, I don't know. I hope that still means okay. Maybe it means something know. terribly offensive now. I don't uh, know. It's, well, if you turn it, it's a gang symbol. Oh, okay. Around. Is it really? Okay. Well, sorry guys. Uh, anyways, and then you're going to fit the pick in between the two fingers of the okay sign and then relax your grip a little bit from there on oh, out. But see yours is at the side of your mine is more finger. yes mine is right between the actual uh and that's what we call prints. strummer's hold by the way strummer's hold is when strummer's hold is either this where they're like making oh, the shoot. uh i i'm crushing your head I, 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 what the buck, buck, buck. yeah that's strummer's hold and then uh this is picker's hold and i i just declared those two things to be that way I've never heard of either of it's those. the uh, international <laughs> understandings okay. of those two things. So uh, strummer's hold is, it's a lot easier to do this. And then picker's hold, it's a lot easier to do this. Like, because it just has to do with like, if you have two fingers involved or one finger. So okay. for a lot of people that want to speed up, they end up having to switch to one finger if they're on two fingers. I would think so, yeah, yeah. that makes sense. So that's something for you guys to think about too. What was your pick thing? Or is that something later? Pick gauge. 
pick gauge. I mean, it seems that in my experience, right? I mean, well, this is a whole other. This, this is, is a, forty minutes, guys. We don't. Yeah. Come on. Yeah, uh, but uh, I bet like you know he gets nervous when we have pick talk. A, so <sighs> if the, if the a really heavy gauge, put the kids or, to bed. A really heavy gauge. Well, on the East Coast, it's eight o'clock. Okay. Um, really heavy gauge. Uh, of course, gives us a lot of impact, a lot of pick attack, um, louder sound, and all that. But I find it's a little easier if it's we're doing faster things like yeah. sweet picking and things ah. like that. Then the thinner the the pick gauge, that really really helps. Mm. Um, that's obviously when a, a thinner pick yeah. is not going to have as much resistance against the string as no. it plays th as we play through the string, so to speak. Yeah, it's it's harder to play faster with thinner picks generally, but um, that's it's a total like. It's a person to person. You're gonna thing. find you're, you're gonna salt to taste yeah. on that. One. And I I would say that uh, thinner picks make more noise. So There's definitely more rake. Yeah. So if you want to like, you'll hear songs that are like, and you hear a lot of pick noise. Yeah. A thinner pick will actually do that a lot better. It has oh, a absolutely. shaker effect. Whereas a, a thicker pick won't have as much noise no. on the strings. This is really apparent on acoustic guitars, but on a lot of electrics, you, especially the cleaner the sound, you'll really, really that'll really be pronounced. Absolutely. Right? And then the composite, the makeup of the pick, has a lot to do with its ability to, to okay. play fast too. I'm actually playing with a pick that inhibits playing fast. It's a nylon pick, and if you if you picture like two doughy things sort of coalescing and that's a nylon pick hitting the, the strings so we got an asmr sound going now that's good and then if you picture something hard hitting the string oh there you go oh, oh look at that. is that yeah so yeah. is this working daniel is this good this okay is good i just want to make sure it's landing with daniel. the optics and the audiences yeah, out there is, yeah this, good. Is, this is sinking up. all right this is, so this is good. the idea is that um the harder picks uh i have a little bit more ability to kind of go faster with because they're not you know doughing into the string so when you're trying to, to to play fast and it it might not be that you're actually just trying to go blah, 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 blah. it might just be that you're trying to do it for a second so if it's like like it's not necessarily playing fast doesn't mean consistently or continuously playing hmm. fast it means the ability to play fast mm -hmm. if needed but i'm sorry I believe I misspoke. I think I said the the reverse and didn't mean to. Oh, at the beginning there. God, are we gonna have a retraction? No, it's fine. I just well, I just I just realized I just I just screwed up the order there. Um, It'll be on like, page. I, I want to take a moment. Thirty one. We're fifteen. Yeah. Fifteen minutes in. Do we have any questions from the audience? Uh, uh, Daniel, do we have any questions from the audience? Do anything coming in, Daniel? Uh, you have a few. We have a few. Mm, okay. Oh God. Uh, what are some great exercises for speed development? Okay, so let's let's go over that one. So number one, so far we have that chromatic yeah. scale, that chromatic. That's form. this guy right here. And by the way, now Dylan, you chose the fifth. Did you choose the fifth fret? Uh, frets five to eight arbitrarily, or what do you have to say about that's that? That's a great question, Eugene. Thank you. Um, I, I the reason I didn't pick one through four, even though that's easier for a beginner to understand, is because they're stretched out further, so it's a little bit harder for them right. to do. Uh, fifth fret is is sort of like the median angle of the guitar. So my suggestion to you is to play this scale up. If you can't do it alternate picking, do all down picking first, and then once you're le uh, left hand or fret hand, mm -hmm. then do that, then introduce the alternate picking. Now, once you can do it up and down here, go up a fret. So I'm at the sixth to ninth fret now, right? Fun. And then just start going up a fret each time. So That was a sneaky. Okay, so that's the He's idea. I've done this a lot, you can tell. And you also want to just try it on one string. So that's literally just it's walking a lot up the neck. of very a lot of ver ver variations of the chromatic form. Yeah, and that's just the start, you guys. I mean, we can go ape nuts, nuts and gravy with this. So, like, if I did, if I skip a string, if I skip over two strings. Then we can start doing the permutations: four times, three times, two times, one. So you right. can start on the second finger. And it just goes on and on and on into oblivion <laughs> until uh, your computer monitor explodes. And again, how does this help us build our speed? It helps you build your speed because when that, when a phrase that's fast in a song or when a, when a pattern that's difficult comes up in a song, you're already uh, obtaining the necessary technical ability to do it. <coughs> Perfect. Now, as you, pardon me. Now, as you said, that's the chromatic form, not the chromatic scale. Nope. Let's talk about scales. This is sure. step two. Now, obviously, yeah. I associate scales with practice. I think we all do, but yeah. but we know scales are much more than that. Actually, scales to me are they relate to chords. They relate to how we write a melody, uh, how we solo. So, 
talk about how we can use scales to our advantage in terms of building our speed. Yeah. Yeah. So scales are going to be the way that you play notes in songs and fragments. So if it's a whatever, I don't know, yeah. it's whatever song that is, right? I mean, that's that's a like a, a fragment or a motive from the, the pentatonic scale. Mm -hmm. So if I know the pentatonic scale really well and I know all the sort of the technical elements I can hammer on and pull off and slide with it and everything. When it go to play that uh, fragment or motive of the song, I'm going to sound like I have command over it. I'm going to be able to voice it like a human would voice it, like instead of yeah, you do the swing with articulations right. and ornamentation, all kinds of stuff. So like if I'm still just sort of figuring out where the notes are and trying to get those under my fingers, then everything is suspect. You're just hunting and pecking. So the scale is like knocking down the very first elements of that. Um, so that you can work on the musical aspects of it. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So for instance, uh, I think you were showing me there was a pentatonic sequence. Yeah, so let's do it. We'll we'll play this for you guys. Uh this is the big this is the big uh this is the big this is gonna go viral. I'm oh, I'm almost positive. This is the thing. Yeah. Uh, is, how many is viral, Daniel? Like what fi over fifty? Eight, eight people? Eight, 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 yeah. eight <laughs> 58 people. Okay, so fifty eight we need fifty eight of you to make this viral. Here we go. So are you ready? One, two. Three, four. Oh, I forgot what this is. Okay, yeah, I got. It. I wasn't ready to answer. Okay, you. okay, go I viral go now. now yeah. Okay, one, two, ready, go. Okay. Yeah, that was yeah. good. That was right. Do it one more time for them because okay. they, they, they were so they were so impressed. Okay, okay, two, ready, go. Yeah. So we played a six-note sequence, uh, a fifth apart. Mm -hmm. And um, basically what happened was is that I played uh, a fifth up from where you're playing and then we played the pentatonic scale and I played the position. I'm saying this a lot of times now. We <laughs> played right. the pentatonic scale and I played the position of the fifth up from you. That's right. Yeah. So we, we played it three strings at a time. Then yes. we started on the next lower string Correct. and the next lower string until we, we so kind of ended. So what that's, that's right. leading into is something called sequences. So there's two kinds of sequences and uh, uh, we're going to talk more about this in the future, but yeah. the main two types are numeric sequences and intervallic sequences. So intervallic sequences are when you have jumps of more than a step. So it could so, be a half step or whole step. Yeah. All right. Technically, that's an intervallic sequence. Um, for the per Since the scale doesn't include uh, stepwise motion, I call this a numeric sequence, but that's that's pointless. It doesn't matter. So, like, if I had an intervallic sequence that was uh, going in thirds, it would sound like this. So, I'm going up a third. For Every each time note. I hear a new note, you're going up. A exactly. Third. That's an intervallic sequence. Whereas the numeric sequence is going to be like one, two, three, two, three, four, three, four, five. Oh. So I'd have like. Or one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five, two, four, five, six, four, five. And that's in music all over the place. Mm -hmm. So let's say you were going to go learn. Uh, 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 <laughs> a little MJ. A little black or white, you know, uh -huh. you're feeling nostalgic from the uh, early 90s mm -hmm. and you want to learn that. There's a, there's a part in it right before the rap with Macaulay Culkin. Right? It goes out. Uh, it's this really ridiculous like sequence, right? I but assume it's that's slash, right? Right? Is he, it's it's that? actually just a sequencer on a, oh, on really? a keyboard, yeah. And it's, oh. it's it's like sixty fourth notes. It's ridiculous. Oh, it's okay, like, so it's not a slash on the guitar. It's literally that fast. But it's like, well, what is that? How can that be so fast? Because it's a pattern. Mm -hmm. Sequences are a pattern. They're a model with repetitions. Okay. So what we played was a six note sequence. So this is the one I would challenge you guys to learn. And if you're in the Patreon, we're gonna we're gonna make a little a ditty for you okay. too on there. It's one, two, three, four, five, six down the pentatonic scale in the key of A from each string. So now I would start the second string, third string, fourth string. So you get, and that's that's actually kind of a. Uh, so the example, I think in short, what we're saying is if you like, let's just take this scale, this pentatonic scale, yep. and actually let's take the sequence he yep. just showed you. Yeah. Yep. yep practice that now notice how fast he played it there that very last time it's because he just he's played that so many times right but so it's not just a matter of, well great he can play that particular thing at that spot that really fast but how how applicable is that well he also developed the techniques in both the strum and fret hand room he has right. those coordinated very very well now but he used a very very 
um, regular, steady, uh, static thing, if you will, over and over again to build that technique. And this is how you end up building speed in your plan. Absolutely. And so, it's, so it's a matter of coordinating or actually having a practice plan, That's a it. workout schedule, if you will. Yeah. You're going to work. It's like leg day, glute day, arm day, whatever chicken day. Chicken breasts, chicken, chicken breasts. Yeah. Nug nuggets day. Well, <laughs> just following your lead, bro. I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I don't know where we're going with this, but um, we talked about chicken picking last week. Yeah. Oh, is that what? Yeah, it that's like, what it is. Yeah. So you know, you just have this solid scale to work on, and again, he's you just grow familiar with that thing. That's and it. Then you do. now eventually though, when you are maybe you're improving, and and all of a sudden you won't notice because it's an evolution. You'll be somewhere else to the neck, and you'll just you'll bust into that spray of notes. You know strategically so and you'll melt faces yeah and and that's when the face was right but then to you you didn't even think hey no. now i'm gonna play something really fast because it's it was just available you're doing you. it all you've done it so many exactly so here can you give me a, a, cor a course or two of uh So that's an example of using it, right? So it's like, it's not, I didn't play the whole scale. I, it, it was in context and it was set up and it was also resolved. You yeah, know one I mean? of my favorite examples, and I, I feel like I mentioned this on, an, on a previous episode, even though this is only a third one, is the solo to Rock Around the Clock on, oh, yeah. on Bill Haley's Rock Around yeah. the Clock. And that solo, it's it starts with a really fast picking thing. Then he goes down to the kind of longer notes. Sure. Then he does these really fast notes, and then he ends with this, this kind of like this little eighth note walk, mm. which I love the the the, the variable yeah. of speed. Right, right. So it starts, and this is uh, you know, then or and the then. Ding, ding, ding. Uh, yeah. And so it's like, it's fast, then he takes his time, then really, so you'll learn how to, by the way, once you do start learning how to play fast, it's very tempting. It is. To play fast all the time. Teenagers. <laughs> oh, fine. Yeah. It's exciting. It's a, and, no, it's, and by the way, you, you should, you'll probably have to burn through that phase. Yeah. As we you'll do. have a teenager phase. Yeah. Sure. Um, but also listen to your favorite players and more often than not, they'll go back and forth. We were talking about the Sweet Child of Mine solo. Uh, uh, Guns N' Roses and to me that's such a great combination of various techniques it's very melodic we hear the harmonic minor uh, minor scale um, we hear and play these really fast passages then there's these kind of really uh, legato passages there's really sequences in there that that's a sequence so it's yeah. Three notes with a stutter, basically. Yeah. It's, right. That's a great example of a yeah. sequence. And that's one that we've, most of us have heard over and over again. So yes. there are practical examples, song examples of this sort of stuff. So anyway, so that's how scales come into play here. Now, step three. Should we check in with Daniel? Oh, I'm sorry, questions? Daniel. Do we have questions? That's great. We do have a few more questions. Oh. Uh, Mark Arndt asks if he's interested in building strumming speed. Strumming speed. Good one. Yeah. Okay, so we're talking about instead of just single notes. You want to feel that? Or you want Getting to the chord work. No, no, uh, go ahead, because I'm out of tune. Okay, so oh, no. Mark, so great question, because that's what's necessary here. So what I would do is cover the strings so they can't ring out, because then you're really just focusing on strumming, and you can get like a really clear sound of what you're doing. And there's, there's not going to be sort of uh, impinged by the notes, if mm -hmm. you will. So then you want to work on just being able to strum in 4-4, four, four, 16th notes or 8th notes if you're starting out. Um, and if you're really, really starting out, just try to get like down strums with the, with the uh, quarter note of a metronome. Believe it or not, people come in the studio and it's like, can you play quarter notes? It's harder than you think. You know, you really have to go chicka, 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 and feel the subdivisions to be able to do we that. get really tempted to strum. Yeah. So, so basically what I would do is I'd work on this pattern and be able to accent the one, the two, the three, and the four. But repeatedly so this is what it would sound like be, if you're hearing this pattern is one two three four one two three four one two that's accenting the one that's the easiest one now here's two so one two three four now here's three three four one two three four and here's four one two three four one two three four one two so then we go jacket the jacket the jacket the jacket 
Yeah. Yet again, we see this using this. That's a pattern or a sequence? That's a pattern. Yeah, it's a pattern. That's a pattern. So now, we, again, we use a, 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 a pattern. Yeah. Uh, call it arbitrary if you will, but yeah. we just select a pattern, work on it, work on it. Because again, in this case, we built up that strum hand. Yeah. And then then uh, we slowly wanted to um, move into, right, because you were, that was, that, that was yeah. pomp, that was fret. I was just muted. covering the strings so they can't ring right. out, yeah. So now, so this so this thing has really, really worked up to something, but now we want to put it into use. Right, right. Right, so now what do we just grab a, a I would I love to grab chord? a D9 chord or something okay, like so that. Okay, so I thought, so, so this may seem like. Because James Brown, that's why. True. Also, but no open strings. No open strings, so exactly. When when you're playing with all a chord with all fretted strings, you can control the the chord. You're just controlling the whole thing sure. so much more. You can mute it, you, you know, all those things. So that's kind of where I was working towards. So yeah, try and use a full. And and if you're a beginner, you know maybe you're an E shape A chord at the fifth fret. Let that be the thing, and then you're working that pattern. That. Sometimes okay. and I <laughs> three non blondes. Sure. Sorry. Um, but as you're, but but if you can try and get yourself to a fully fretted chord, fully fretted chord, fully fretted right. chord, fully, fully fretted, fretted chord. chord, fully fretted chord, fully fretted chord, fully fretted chord. That's oh, that'd be a great pattern. There what else know. do we have, Daniel? Uh, Scott Fogelman. Scott. Any great songs that help us develop? Oh, uh, well, that's interesting, yeah. Scott, because it's one of those things where. Um, if it's already played fast, then you have to be able to, it's a bit of a chicken and egg. However, yeah. um, let me think here. Um, well, so there's like a ton of classical music will help you develop oh. speed. So like starting there. So if you know, uh, or sorry, I'm in the wrong key, but whatever. It's Marriage of Figaro or, uh, whatever that's called, uh, Flight of the Bumblebee. Of the Bumblebee yeah, yeah. So, um, even the Bach... What are they called? The inventions, the Bach two-part inventions. But uh, taking fragments of anything that's in a song that you like that has any speed in it whatsoever. So let's say it was. Uh, oh. Like working on getting that really clean and in time, and then you can go above speed. If Scott, you yeah, I think here, back to the top of what we said at the beginning. Something you know really well. Now, I know, even if you don't know how to play it yet, something you've heard, like in this case, you know, Reeling in the Years by yeah. Steely Dan. Or right. Like, you just, you know how it sounds. So, so that's kind of a lock. You know what the goal is. It's really clear. Um, and then don't try to learn all of Reeling in the Years. No, I, I think just... Just grab a phrase that grab you really, phrase, really yeah. dig. Um, that's a nice, you know, um, we call it like a bite-sized morsel. Yeah. And uh, again, make it something, hopefully something that you really, really like and you really want to accomplish. But so, um, so Scott, that might be something um, we can discuss a little further in, in Patreon directly with you in terms of maybe we can figure out a song that you, you like, you know, or have always wanted to learn. Um, you know, there's, again, it could just be four bars from uh, the, the solo to Hotel California. Yeah. And there might just be something in there that's just kind of... Well, obviously that or, or, or the, the Felder soul that leads up to that. But that's not a bad one either because yeah. that has sequences. Oh, the... Da, 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 da. Yeah. yeah, that's great. Yeah, so um, good question, Scott. Yeah, I think there are definitely ones. Even the, the little lick in them. Yeah. Like turning that into... It's great too because that's that's a that's a, well it's a pentatonic scale right yeah. there. So it's not like you have to learn tons of notes. You just have to learn the right notes, right? Play the right way, and the sequence is right there. So yeah, and and getting really mechanized in the way you play stuff is what allows you to build speed because it's about the attack and the cutoff. So if it's if you can develop the ability to decide if the attack or a short cutoff. It's like then you have command. It's almost like I know how to I know. The lengths of my car, so when I'm parking, I'm not worried about oh, running nice into somebody analogy. when I turn it in. That's smooth. Well, I had a uh, ginkgo <laughs> earlier. It was a double. I, I don't know the foreign cars like you do, yeah, but I started. Um, I remember yeah. having a discussion once with a, a bass player, a guy Keith Rose, fantastic bass player, been around for a long time, tons of session work. Um, and I remember we're on break once at a gig, and uh, I asked him, "What are you thinking about when you're playing?" And he was smoking a cigar, and he took a drag, and he looked up and goes, <sighs> note length. 
Note length. That's all he's. He's just about note length. He's in. He's in with the length of every note he's yeah. playing. So he's so locked in with a kick drum. Like again, and we play a gig with this guy. You feel like you can do anything because the, the rhythm section is so solid. And by no accident, the guy's thinking about note length. Yeah, it's, it's, it's all about he's cut controlling. Offs. He's cutting off yeah. that note. It's just as and if if he feels as though he wants to get, if he wants to be a little bit deeper into the pocket or he's gonna hold a little longer yeah if you want he, he can, you, you know you can control so much of the feel of a tune over a passage but just concentrate on your note length and by dylan was saying just work on playing something quarter note i mean it, it's it's harder than you think honestly you can show up in the studio to, to record someday and be I'm like i'm here's, having trouble playing quarter notes here's a 100 bpm quarter notes like just give them or so mm. Do this all day. But this is great <laughs> discipline. <laughs> Set an egg timer. See if you could just do this for three minutes straight. I messed up. I, I got ahead. I got. I was thinking I, about I, something I else. I heard myself I was, get I ahead as I was forest, talking. Heather Locklear. So yeah, huh? I don't yeah. Know. Um. So is she? Is she one of our Patreon members? Oh, Heather. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Heather. Yeah. So uh, so anyway, Scott. That uh, hopefully that answers your question. But but we we can maybe get more uh, into detail on that. Uh, later on in the Patreon. Step three. Let's talk about step, step three. three. Uh, legato. I love saying it. It's a lovely word to say, of course, but uh, I don't really know what it means. Or the, it means the cat in Spanish. Yes. The power to turn your life and will over to legato. Step three. I mean, just legato, actually. So basically, legato is the concept of all pull-offs and hammer-ons. So legato playing is smooth and connected. Mm -hmm. And uh, if I pull off from seven to five on the fourth string... instead of picking it there's a different quality in the sound of it right especially the cleaner you play the more you can hear that that sounds like a british ambulance to me for some reason it's not the right interval yeah. but it feels but, like. uh, but so that's the idea i mean that's that's what it is and what happens is uh even advanced players i'll hear them or advanced players even people who have been playing for a very long time i'll hear them speed up when they hammer on and pull off so hammering what on they'll that? tend to slow down and they'll sweet up when they pull off because it's easier. Oh, the pull off is easier. Yeah. Yeah. So what I would recommend to you guys is to start with either the pentatonic scale or two open strings. So if you're going to be... That was you're going to have to be able to pull off a lot, right? Okay. So that first one, that was an open E minor pentatonic? That was open E minor pentatonic. And the, the goal is to be really mechanized, like... Back to that note length. You didn't cut off any of the notes. No, nope. you let them. You let the sound of them bleed into there. You know. And how do we see that in music notation? How's the uh, auto indicated? It, it would be over the bar, or you'd be tied basically. Right. So you, you would have a big tie. arc. Yeah, and that's that? that's what that indicative means. of legatos too is like this slur marking. So uh, the other thing is, and here's a big trick. Are you guys ready for this? This is a huge trick to playing music on guitar. You ready? This is this is the viral moment. I think maybe. Oh, oh, viral moment. Viral Daniel, moment. The viral moment is happening. Probably not. Mm -hmm. um, but basically, they're in diatonic music, so music derived from the major scale on the guitar. That means it's stepwise. It's either a whole step or a half step. It, there's only really three shapes when you're on one string. There's this shape, which is going to be like five, six, eight. This shape, oh. five, seven, eight, and this shape, five, seven, nine. So if you can play legato in all three of those shapes, so the big one. The, this is the other small one where your inde uh, index finger is in the middle. This is the one where your third finger, this is the hardest one, the ring finger one. If you can play legato with all three of those shapes really well, you basically covered your bases for all of diatonic music. I have a question. Um, in fact, this is something you mentioned earlier. Was it the, the intro to Hot for Teacher, what Eddie Van Halen does? Now, before you play it, now he's just working really, he's just working a shape, isn't he? He... It's not as though he's concerned with the note choice as scale as scale no. tones. He's really just he has a pattern. He play it's legato. Yep. It's fast, and of course he uses a hammer on technique. That's right. But the hammer on isn't really what makes it fast. The hammer on is really what gives him the the large interval. Right. But talk just really quickly. Just tell him what that pattern is. It's literally called the Van Halen sequence. Is what because I what it, I know it as. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so it's just it's just this diatonic shape five seven eight right. Mm -hmm. So if you just went eight seven five eight seven five on each string, and 
then you tap the 12th fret. So five, seven, eight, tap. <laughs> and when you play it fast, it was like, oh my God, yeah, that's the record. Like, but notice yeah. when he when he slows it down and breaks it in these little bite-sized fragments, yeah. it's it's we don't want to get too mechanical about it, but there there is a mechanic to it. Yeah. So I mean, that's how the greats did it. Yeah, and case. that's that notice the evenness though. So like the the mechanized movement of it. It's like snapping your finger from one spot to another one. I got to take his collar off. Keep going. Sure. So, uh, so dig. Uh, like, here's another example: legato and music. And I think at the end, what Mike Campbell plays at the end of "Boys of Summer," which I believe is in, mm, is that in G G flat? Oh, I love that part. He just repeats this. That's a really good song, by the way. Great song. I know, I love that. Even that intro. Yeah. Yeah. All these legato things he's doing, right? He's not really hand-picking those notes. Those note lengths is very, very fluid. And not a lot of notes, right? really. But a mix of slide, hammer-on, pull-offs. But it's a very, very legato. And especially, it really means something at the end when he plays that figure. And these are all sort of meant to mimic the way a human voice moves from one this note is to the next. Voice. So this is what yeah. this legato has a lot to do with this. The vibrato that we add. Uh, he gives that that second note just a little bit of a shake. Right. Like an opera singer would. Just to get a little emotion going in there. Yeah. The slides. Um, this. A lot of singers, instead of saying, bop, they, go, ah, they would bend, they would kind of slot glissando. Yeah. Up. To that target note, that's a very vocal, a very vocalic sort of thing. Uh, very, mel melismatic. Melismatic. Mm, um, yes. It's very melismatic. It's, it's it's what singers do, and what we're really trying to do uh, is, if we can get again, we talk about being fluid. You know, singers are always doing what's most fluid. You know, uh, I mean, obviously, in opera in areas. That's why that they conduct like this. Everything looks. Right. Like if you if you have choral conducting, it's like, and the, they're trying to get you to do this as smoothly as possible. And basically, just imagine you're in jello the entire time. Now I'm pretty sure they didn't have anyone conducting Mike Campbell when he recorded the Boys of Summer guitar part, but they didn't have a budget. They didn't have the budget. They didn't have the budget. They spent it on the Lynn drum machine. Yeah, yeah. But um, but I I think that's one of the, why this guitar part is so affecting, you know, uh, and and I guess now, by now iconic. But at the end of that song, when it's fading out over that major chord over the choruses of the chorus, uh, certainly Glenn. I'm sorry, no, but Don Henley has been singing uh, quite legato throughout most of the song. So it makes sense that Mike Campbell's guitar is kind of matching the vocal. It's really, really great part playing, great you know, record playing, yeah. if you will. Yeah, it's sort of playing against each other. And mm -hmm. so you brought us to our other legato technique. So right now, the main legato technique that I would work on is the pull-offs and work on them in isolation. If you're just starting on one string first, the pentatonic scale, or you can work on it if you know a major scale, you can try to play it. As legato as possible. So, but the the other technique is sliding, and and you did yeah. a little bit of that in mm -hmm. there. And so, if we take like a, so that's going, that's just playing again the A minor. I'm basing these all out of the same thing, so I'm trying to make yeah, it easy. We, no, no, it's so that's again the A minor pentatonic scale. I'm sliding up from the highest note to two frets up on every string, and then pulling off. And notice that's all tick 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 It's it's actually not that easy to develop that at first. It's going to take you some time to make your slides just as even as your pick notes. And that's going to have you do that at 100 BPM. Yeah, and you could tell at the top of that I I was sort of rushing just a hair, so I kind of had to correct halfway. Because you have to get acclimated to every tempo when you start. Hey, by the way, quick yeah. tip. You know, I know some people, look, like I have this set for a hi-hat because I myself, I, I don't like the sound of a click. And I know I'm not alone in the studio if we have a click. Uh, I'll Especially the Pro Tools click. It's, 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 it's like really harsh. Yeah. Um, wow. 
so I'll go for, uh, you know, you can set most metronomes for a wood block, a yeah. tambourine, a, sim- you know. Um, Maybe if you're, if you want to try migraines, like if you're <laughs> if like, well, everybody else is doing them. Investing, yeah. Because right, you are know, like so many people, you don't have migraines. And it's like, like just, well, what's I it mean, like though? I don't, yeah. I want to know. Wood block me. Uh, Daniel, should we ask, are there any other questions? Also, ladies and gentlemen at home, uh, if we could welcome Mr. Daniel McLaughlin to the uh, team here. Daniel McLaughlin. Soon we're going to have a camera on him. Daniel. And uh, Get used to him, you guys. You'll be making a lot of demands. I'll tell you why, because we had a lot of complaints about fact-checking. Thousands of complaints about fact-checking. Um, so we need someone to fact-check in real time, you know, so that, uh, you know. Look, just because I'm a know-it-all doesn't mean everything I, I'm saying is accurate. The, the, the phrase really covers a lot. Just because I said Ronald Reagan was involved in the Civil War does not mean I don't know <laughs> he politics. He wasn't that old, okay? He just wasn't that old. He was old. He wasn't that old. Okay, but, right? what, you know. Yeah, no, okay, I know. But all right. he, just, he wasn't that right. old. It's neither civil nor war. <laughs> Talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> okay, uh, but also one more thing. If you don't like metronomes, on the YouTubes, you know, there's tons of just like, there's like a lot of, bless their hearts, a lot of drummers will just play a steady beat yeah. at various BPMs. You'll just see 4-4 four, four rock beat at 85 BPM. And so now you can just practice That's awesome. your scales. Yeah, we didn't used to have that. And it's so much more fun to go. To an actual drum loop. It's like you you start to dig in in the right spots without having to do all this thinking about what does it mean to dig in in the right spot? If you have GarageBand on your phone, you know, there's drum loops, set the BPM and go ahead and just practice that because I get it. I get it. But I really want people, we really want people to use metronomes as much as possible. Yeah. Nowadays, I think drum loops count. And I don't, I mean, who has a metronome anymore? Who has like an isolated metronome? Okay. Father time. I mean, but you know, like very, most people are always already using their phones. And I would say yeah. there's some trouble in that though, because this is called the distraction device. And so, oh, but it's if my metronome app yeah, is right next to my, it's right next to my TikTok, my, yo. Oh, I was thinking my recipe apps, but yeah, same thing. Okay. Actually, idea. I got a recipe off of TikTok. I made my own limoncello. Did it, did we, we shouldn't have to talk about that here. Um, a, a little bitter. I think I had too much of the white of the peel. And Daniel, so what other questions do we have about his limoncellos? Probably, probably none. Okay. Uh, Point taken. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll bring some next week. To yeah, I really, really will. Okay. Oh, go ahead. Oh. Ooh, that's the, good. The spi- They're getting the spider to the gritty one? of it. Do you know the yeah. spider one? I mean, that's basically the, the first exercise. Mm-hmm. So, okay, so Dylan's chromatic form. I'll go back to, to, to fret five, uh, five to eight. Play that chromatic form. Now, when my pinky's at fret eight on the low E string, my next note is fifth fret A string, right? So I really want to concentrate on not lifting that pinky. Now, this is going to force your arc, your finger arc, so that that A string can ring past your pinky. Right. But I want, this is also very legato, is to make this legato. Legato. Now, I'm actually holding my pinky down as long as I, until. And he's holding every finger down until it's, it's like absolutely necessary to take it off right yeah so that so it's i i I, is it generally called the spider i've heard it called the spider it's very popular that that's what that's something i I don't know i I don't even remember who taught that to me because i was having this problem it's 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 age old i was lifting my fingers just a little too fast and that was affecting the note it's not reagan civil war old but it's very old he you get some really cool yeah i was gonna say these so I don't. So that's the first thing that came to mind with that question. What What do you? What, what say you, sir? Uh, you know what? Anytime you play anything faster, your body's gonna have to not lift it off as far because you you literally can't. I, I keep going back to that, but it could be whatever exercise, right? So if it's a, like you're you're gonna you're not gonna be able to go. So it, it's gonna be forced in you by simply going faster. Uh. I, I made this example with Eugene. I'm going to use it again. So like when you were three, maybe two, some of you, and maybe five, some of us. But when you learned how to tie your shoes, I guarantee you it was like it was a serious undertaking. I mean, it literally there was a multi-month process. Crying. There was level one. It was crying. There was ball. stage two. There was like, I might not make it. It was like the Olympics for your feet. Right. And then but now you could tie your shoes, check 
stocks, complain about the weather, and begin divorce proceedings all in the same literal breath. It's a heck of a Tuesday. That's right. So, I mean, that that just kind of shows you like making something that reflexive is all about repetition and sleeping on it, mm-hmm. and then repetition and, and then getting it into memory uh, while you sleep. Not literally sleeping on the guitar. I mean, <laughs> sleeping, okay. sleeping after you've worked on something. I woke up Sunday morning. Yeah. <laughs> I woke up Sunday morning. I opened a, the door. With a telly in my bed because I went, I fell asleep working on something that I had to play the next day. Um, And I was worried I was going to, because I had to leave early for the gig on Sunday. I mean, I woke up and the telly was still there. I woke up before the first cup of coffee. Wow. Got it. Just, yeah. Let's go. I, mean, I just, because, because I needed to get in as me, as many reps, as much repetition. Yeah. To this this particular figure that we know. Oh, by the way, you know who I met? Side note. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Rip Taylor. That would have been awesome. That would have been really that cool. been awesome. <laughs> the confetti, the buckets. Hello. <laughs> do, you, do you know about the Victoria's Secret song? In no. this artist Jax? No. Did it's J A X. J A X. Yeah. I, I think she was an American Idol contestant at some point. And I so on Sunday, yeah. we're going to do this gig up, up in Calabasas. And sure. we usually have a lot of sit-ins. Sure. And I woke up that morning thinking I knew who was sitting in. And I did. But there was one more person. And our drummer Jax. says, you're going to love Jax. You're gonna, her song, that song is so good. Yeah. She's going to be great. Said, her song's called Victoria's Secret? And her, it's the Victoria's Secret song. I'm worried that she may have some sort of copyright issues. I don't that. know anything about this. I said, I'm, I'm, I'm the one person who doesn't know what's going on. So well, it's a it's a it's a clothing line for women. No, that part that, I know. Okay, so she's got this really clever pop song, and so we learned it really quickly. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, back to another lesson. You know, charting sure. out the tune. Yeah, just focusing. Is there a hard part? Right. Um, and it was really just a matter of uh, the the sequence, the chord sequence. Ah. You figure out the pattern because there's there's a sharp five five move, but only every other time it goes to the fives. So oh yeah, I love those. Get, I love those. Yeah. those are great. So and she came up and she killed. She was fantastic. That's Jax. Jax. That's Jax's Victoria's Secret you. song. Anyway, so I met her. She was awesome. Well, fantastic. I mean, you know, we might have to make this a multi-week situation here to finish this. B- building the speed? Yeah. We only have three of them. Well, two. Mm. No, I mean, well, no, no. We only have one, one more step. We only have one. Oh, one more step. Yeah, okay, yeah, we can do we another step. about slides. So, so this is, um, well, this step is sweet picking. Five. Oh, God. <laughs> we save the, the oh. toughest for last. You I know. save the best for uh, last. So we tend to think of this rake picking, you know, like Ingve Mel. Steam yeah, and, and that sort of thing. Um, if you're thinking about that, just feels like. Speaking of Rip Taylor, it's a confetti of notes. It it's is. Just this Good boom. God. Now, um, but if we take a different look at it, yeah, right. And again, start like what is it? What is it? And then how can we slowly incorporate the concept into our playing? It's basically like picking in one direction where the notes have the least amount of space possible. So if it's. Uh... <laughs> I mean, it's basically like you're you're trying to have complete connectivity between the notes. So it's legato. Exactly. It's also it seems as breaking the pick. And then the also like, we couldn't help but notice there's this very talk about it's almost like you're talking about that that that, that conductor that classical conductor it is. that your hand did very not much look so very mechanized. It looked like it was, it was trying to be as smooth as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was all arpeggiated. That was all. It's 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 commonly done with arpeggios. However. However. If it, to get ourselves started, I think we can get you started. Can yeah. we get started with just like maybe holding a one shape? I think so. I think if you can hold like the this guy, like the the bottom of an A minor, even an E minor seven there. Okay. And if you can no, drag notice, him guys, through this, just because we get this question, like, this goes for acoustic as well. Oh so yeah, especially like he's down here in this open position. Yes, this is inclusive of, of acoustic guitars. That's right. We take all kinds. And so up here, the reason that it, you mostly do it on fretted notes is because you have the ability to deaden the last note. Back to that note length. Yeah, and so... Sorry. So that's instead of going... They were staccato. Yeah, they're... they're that's the, the raking part of that, right? Mm-hmm. So the concept is basically to drag your pick through the strings and to create um, a raking sound. And it's going to require a lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs when you start moving from shape to shape. So this is a great, if you're, if you're a, a, a be, intermediate beginner and above, 
I think this would be the best exercise for you to start doing. So let's say we're at the fifth fret again, and we have seven, six, five, hammer on eight, pull off back to five, and then rake your pick back down, which means it's all up picking. Six, seven. So all down picks, you're dragging your pick through the strings. Hammer on, pull off, drag, drag. And that's that's the that's the being of a Malmsteen one if you just go to a higher note. It's the um, same shape. Yep, yeah, same shape. Same shape. So that's a really good shape to start this with. The other exercise that um and maybe we'll we'll show this to the Patreon is to do this guy. Is that the X? It just sounds like uh like you remember when computers used to that's malfunction what I was in the 80s that's like an old sci -fi in the 80s thing. computers would malfunction and they would just do 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 and they would just be well they were smoke cuz well they weren't working for us cuz they were busy rake picking yeah well and, and but they would they, the would, 80s. Sm they would start Even. on fire basically oh, yeah, and it would smoking. literally you know they, now a computer malfunctions and it just stops working it's just i'm out it's totally uninteresting yeah it's not as much fun you know so easy is with a with just holding a a, a chord shape like he did an open chord like a d chord would work yeah. Or those, or those, 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 those arpeggiated patterns. Exactly. That would be for the harder version of. But and you could do that on each string set. So that, that was four, three, two, one, five, four, three, two, six, five, three. <laughs> so there's, there's a, a lot of use cases for that. There, you know? there was a reason for that with step five though, because it is towards <laughs> the advanced move there. It so would be. We're yes. assuming that these first four things we we showed you that you have at least a, a if not a, a really full command, but at least yeah. you can you can handle them. Right. The, the the rake picking the sweet picking comes in it's yeah it's really just for uh but it's a lot of fun i mean it, it really is effective if you can do it let's uh, face it it is and uh it's it you know we can spend a whole episode on this sometime because um it's it's really difficult to do but it's in so many great songs but here's the thing so that was from sultan's a swing yeah, i was I gonna guess. say that's sultan's but i didn't even but i actually was using believe it or not i did a hybrid same thing same sound though yeah so i i raked a couple of strings with with the pick but then the last two I was using, so this is like the country version of. Isn't he an all thumb player? He doesn't use a pick at all, right? Yeah, there's no pick. No, you're right. So do you think he's. No, the thumb goes through. Okay, so he's doing the same thing. He, he, he goes through three strings A, and this. A, D, and G. And that's then, weird. See, that's harder for me to do. See that? I yeah. Should go, I should go out of it. Yeah. There's that same shape though. So, yeah, oh yeah, same shape. Yeah, it's really the same. I mean, it's the same concept. So you hear it a lot in with the same sort of uh, arpeggiotic, not a word, uh, connotation. <laughs> I, I can allegiance. make up one word a day. I I I I, I patriotic. <laughs> the arpeggi arpatriotic. <laughs> All right, and that's the cue, you guys. That's the cue. <laughs> so so it's been a oh. wonderful episode. Uh, I think we should get some CPR to Daniel. He doesn't look so good. Daniel's probably Daniel, working on. Do we have any more questions or any shout outs that we should, before we sign off, buddy? Uh, one last one that might be great for wrapping up. I'm 68 years old. Uh, I'm not 68 years old. It is Marilee Broker. Uh -huh. I'm 68 years old. Is it actually realistically possible for these old fingers to go fast? Yes. Is it possible for someone who's 68 years old? Because I don't know if they can hear Daniel. So we have yeah. someone who's 68 years old. They're asking, is it possible for her, for their yes. old fingers, in their words, I guess the combined age of their fingers is about 176 years. Right, right. So if you add them all up together. Sorry. Uh, oh, yeah. And that, that was, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, the answer is yes. So let me tell you guys. So the reason that in neuroscience that we know you can learn, uh, you can learn just as effectively as any sort of, let's say, 14-year-old might learn, it has to be connected to something that's vital for living and we know this from uh from some very undesirable situations that were created by wars in the past mm -hmm. and so even elderly people that were in these places would be able to learn new skills and learn them quickly because they were connected to to their to the survival okay. yeah so if if you're able i don't i don't want to say like mixing food and guitar is great but, you know like my favorite thing is crispy cream donuts on the strings but honestly, believe it or not, if you can reward yourself while you're playing, like with an almond or with like a, uh, the reward system gets cued in, then you have dopamine, acetylcholine, norepinephrine, and uh, the monoamines start 
triggering neural pathway growth. That's that's the truth. I, I'm not. Uh, that I'm, sounded like the truth because I didn't understand it. Yeah, it, some of those words. I, yeah, but yeah. I mean, so literally, the the answer. Who, uh, sorry, who Marilee. Oh, Marilee. So, no, Marilee. Hey, Marilee. Marilee, Marilee how Marilee, are you? She, Marilee's a private yes. student of mine, so I know how she's going to board herself. She's going to buy another guitar. Right. Well, that too. But I mean. So maybe buy have like a mobster guy joint it and then send you pieces of it in the mail every time you learn a little note. <laughs> made out of You'll get the letters cut out back of in a week. No, there's a fret. You just get a fret. Anyways, but the point is, is so you you spend some time and you connect it to something that's boring. And I would say food. You know, sex is going to be kind of weird, right? So I would I would stick with when food on it? this. Yeah. Although could be interesting, you know, but I, I would say stick with food on this one or stick with something that's you could just stop and acknowledge like I'm better at this than I was because developing an internalized reward system yeah. is really where it's at because that you can cultivate and continue as much as you want. Uh, consider in the day, you guys, especially people who are, let's say, over 50, mm -hmm. even over 40, like um how much time do you spend thinking that you are inhibited by your age? And I realize that there's something in nature that's telling us anybody that is over 40 or 50 or whatever, you know, like, hey, you're on the second half of life. But I'm on the back. Nine. Yeah, I'm on the back nine. But <laughs> is that actually true? Is that actually true? And I think that 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 narrative, which is supported maybe by society and by many other things, oh, this is, is not this actually is the case. Yeah. And so um, what I would argue is that if you spend more time considering um what is possible rather than what your limitations are merely get the question out of your head yeah get out of your head yeah just learn the lick yeah learn the lick because you will be able to do it merely actually just a lick. you will it's a lick yeah All right. that was beautiful i love i love okay. ending on that uh we've been two guys with guitars i'm eugene edwards this is dylan calajuri there's our buddy daniel over daniel there rex. Know him very, very well. rex is right here yeah <laughs> it's gonna hit yeah, rex is in the shot he smells like a, a jacket from, yeah. Rex knows it's his time for his W-A-L-K. Yeah. I don't know why I spell it because he knows what it means anyway. Yeah. Um, we'll be here next Wednesday live at 5 p.m. as we always are. Yep. And uh, thank you to all that are supporting us on Patreon. The link is down below. Please help us. Please support us. We'll see you there a little later for special content. With that, we're out. Which I hit this one. I hit still. Hit, uh, hey, play something cool Just unplug on the, the computer, out. I think, basically is what we're it is. Gonna uh, throw, we're going to throw the desktop into a swimming pool. And that's how we're going to complete our show.